Hello friends, welcome to yet another edition of Biology Made Easy. Today I'll be bringing you a very intriguing topic known as the Cori cycle. It was discovered by Gertie and Carl Cori. Now, what is Cori cycle? Cori cycle discusses the phenomenon where our muscle, when we do exercise a lot, when we go for stringent muscle activity, like we go for gymming, we go for running, what does the energy load on the muscle implicate on the body how how do the atps are used by the muscle how does the os, oxygen debt in the muscle increase and how does the muscle make atp or make use of more enhanced need of atp so here is the thing first of all when we are in running or when we are in gymming whatever strenuous activity we are trying to do what happens is the body will release epinephrine which is also known as adrenaline which is, a, which is both a neurotransmitter and a hormone. Epinephrine will bind to the GPCR G protein coupled receptors on the muscle cells and it will initiate the secondary messenger pathway by stimulating adenineal cyclase which will stimulate cyclic AMP which will then stimulate PKA protein kinase A, CAMP dependent protein kinase, which will then stimulate the glycogen phosphorylase. The details of glycogen phosphorylase stimulation will be discussed in a in my next video, which will be dealt on the glycolytic, on the glycogenolysis and glucon and glycogenesis pathways. So right then in short, PKA would stimulate or activate the glycogen phosphorylase and the glycogen will be broken down into glucose 1-phosphate then via phospho, phosphoglucomutase it will be converted to glucose 6-phosphate. Now glucose 6-phosphate its fate will be determined by letting it complete the glycolytic cycle we will get a net of 2 ATP via the glycolytic cycle and you will have pyruvate. Now in any general scenario if you are resting if you are doing some you, you can say non strenuous job pyruvate would enter the inner mitochondrial membrane via mitochondrial pyruvate complex mpc and then the krebs cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle would get initiated we will form acetyl coa via oxidative decarboxylation and then we would run the etc etc electron transport chain and the air then a lot of ATP would be produced in the end by the F1 if not ATPs via rotational catalysis or the binding change model via the chemo, chemo electrochemical gradient known as the chemo osmotic theory. So, but these all those things happen in presence of or happen in, in the case when we are resting, when we are not going for any kind of strenuous activities. But when we are straining our body, when we are going for really strenuous activities, what happens is we consume, the muscle cells consume more oxygen than it can get. Then what happens, there is no oxygen available for the acceptance of the electrons coming from the NADH in the complex 4. Since no oxygen, no terminal oxygen is available, there is no availability of oxygen, then the entire ETC the F1, F0 ATPase cycle and the citric acid cycle would be inhibited. The citric acid cycle cannot run in any anaerobic condition. But the glycolysis can run. The glycolysis would continue running in anaerobic conditions producing more and more pyruvate in the cytosol. Due to the accumulation of pyruvate in the cytosol, then what would happen is pyruvate would be reduced to a compound known as lactate or lactic acid. Since it's a, it's a reduction what would happen is something should oxidize itself because in the body or in any chemical reaction or a biochemical reaction we have a redox reaction reduction and oxidation are coupled so since pyruvate has been reduced to lactate or lactic acid now what we will have is the oxidation of NADH nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide hydrogen to nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide NAD plus. Now lactic acid would get accumulated more and more 
and in the end we will start feeling pain because of lactic acid overload it would in increase the acidity decrease the pH of the blood and all the buffer components in the blood would then get saturated and then lactic acid in the end would cause a lot of cramping and we have to really seize our all kinds of strenuous activities right now lactic acid the liver is a very special organ is the largest visceral organ in the human body the liver would take the load the lactic acid would be transported inside the hepatocytes where lactic acid would be converted to pyruvate via the same enzyme lactate dehydrogenase but the, but this process is an oxidation process therefore the oxidation process will require the reduction so nad plus would be reduced to nadh now pyruvate would be converted to glucose 6 phosphate via a process known as gluconeogenesis will be dealt in depth in my later videos it would require six more atps and then glucose 6 phosphate can be converted to glucose and glucose can be resent to muscle or if we are now we have now gone for non strenuous activity if the person has switched to a non strenuous activity then the glucose 6 phosphate could also be converted to glycogen via glycogenesis and this one is glycogen to glucose 6 phosphate is glycogenolysis breakdown of glycogen synthesis or formation of glycogen now the entire thing is this is the cori cycle now in order for the cori cycle to run completely and incessantly what you need is you need the glucose molecule to be generated and if you need it to continue you need a substantial amount of atp here for the gluconeogenetic pathway for the formation of gluco for the formation of glucose 6 phosphate from pyruvate so in order for this to happen oxidative decarboxylation and then it should run the etc the krebs cycle and the f1f0 atp so that substantial amount of atp could be synthesized if that could be synthesized it would then substantiate or it would then fulfill the demand of the atp needed by the gluconeogenetic pathway so that is a very good area of concern next thing here here you can see nadh getting produced means in the liver the nad plus to nadh ratio is quite high in the muscle you can see nad plus getting produced means nadh to or sorry nad plus to nadh ratio is quite low and nad plus is why it is being produced because nad plus if it is not produced it won't it is mandatorily needed it is indispensable for the glycolysis process to continue because this is an oxidation process this will get reduced to nadh at two steps in glycolysis which i have already explained to you in my previous videos so you need to produce nad plus in order to sustain or carry on this glycolytic process because it's a it's an oxidation process it's a catabolic process and it needs the nad plus mandatorily because if nad plus is absent nothing can be reduced and this cannot be oxidized so in two steps you need nad plus right so you need nad plus desperately here and nad plus to nadh ratio is low in muscles and high in the liver so that, that's all about the cori cycle if you have any queries do do post it in the comment section below and if you have liked the content then kindly hit the like button and the subscribe button and do ring the notification bell as well so so as to be notified whenever my next video comes around see you soon thank you